Play by my mom or something. Come on. <laughs> Hello, Mr. Brown. Good afternoon, everyone. Glad you're Good here. Afternoon. Hey. Well, there's a there's a chunk of the class being there on time. Thank you very much. Uh, and this is one class I am so excited about. Not that I'm not. Let me stop. <laughs> I'm excited about it all. Uh, especially meeting everybody, but your class, I promise you, did not go shopping at Amazon. I was like, oh, one of them. Oh, yes, her it is. The oh, wait, wait, there it is. Uh, WB. Oh. <laughs> you know, I hate to hear that. No, I don't because <laughs> it's an investment, you know, because it's I to know. me. I'm going to take the moment and really go, oh, this was on Mr. Sawyer's mind. You know what? I agree. You know, it's good that is a journey and i'm sure i may have a class that may require those again well <sighs> and that's that's part of college as you say here's what the teacher's saying but here's other things the teacher's talking about oh i could follow that rabbit trail and find out more this way that's really good i like it exactly mm -hmm. Hello, Mr. Tom. Mr. Logston is here. Oh, Mr. is his name? Wait a minute. Logden? No. One of the authors? Oh, yes. Dr. Brogdon. 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 B R O G. -D. Yes, I was like, really? Mm hmm. Yes, I, I had him for uh, Romans. Two or three books. Mm -hmm. I was like, wow. I think you need to hear him speak. You need to hear him speak. Really? Yes, yes. We'll have him. Well, Lucretia, I'm sure going to look out for it. Wow. Yes. He has spoken at uh, St. Stephen's a couple of times. And um, I didn't know that he was even a teacher at the school. And I was already intrigued with just him speaking. And he's powerful. Yes. Oh, yes. He, he's going to come and speak to our class when we talk about the... the uh, 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 well, yeah. You have been modest too, Dr. Sawyer. You got a book too. I do. Yeah, I got two books actually, <laughs> but not as many as Brogdon. Brogdon's, he, let's see, he's, I think he finished his doctorate five years ago and he's only written seven books since then. <laughs> he teaches, he? he's the head of the religion department at, at Simmons. He also teaches in the Black Church Studies and Bible College, Bible Department at the Baptist Seminary of Kentucky, which is on the Simmons campus. Uh, he's a very accomplished uh, scholar, one of the preeminent New Testament scholars in Black theology in, in America. He's amazing. And he's, he's a friend of mine. Hello, Ms. Smith. Hello. Uh, I'll tell you this about uh, Dr. Brogdon. He, he was a student of mine at the Presbyterian Seminary. Way ah. uh, You're turning out students like that. I got hope. Yeah. <laughs> well, he is, he's did he tell you he is where a, he got all this from? No, uh, that's just, he, he, he was way ahead of it before he got there. Uh, but then he became a member of the faculty there later. And then uh, he left there, went off and did something else, came back to Simmons. And that's when he invited me to come and teach at Simmons, which is, it's been a kick for me as well. So there's the connection with Lewis Brogdon. But, yeah, he's, I've, I've had a couple of people who have this semester ask me about him. And I told them point blank, do what he tells you to do, not what you think you should do. Mm. <laughs> I had him for Romans and he, you know, he explains to you how he wants you to write, what he wants you to look up, and how he wants it formatted. Mm -hmm. He doesn't want you to add your own opinion to it unless he mm -hmm. asks. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I said, just do do what he tells you, not what you think you ought to do. Now that's that's the perfect segue to what I want to do in this class today, Mr. Mm -hmm. uh, Holbrook. Because I want to tell you what I want you to do. <laughs> uh, and so, and the, I'm going to tell you how you can succeed in this class and what we're going to use to do that. That's, mm -hmm. that's what this whole today and Wednesday are going to be about. Um, uh, so I sent you a, a set of topics that we would talk about for today. 
uh, the, the first thing is to talk about is uh, filling in the second class time for this class. I think I may have said last Monday that um, the, because of the remote learning process, the college only assigned one day to most of the classes with the suggestion that if you want to have another class day, you got to figure out when to do that. Um, I had up until recently had another class scheduled for Wednesday at one at this hour, um, but I was, it only has two students in it. I've got them to move to it another time. And I thought, well, that'd be perfect. We could do this like a regular Monday, Wednesday, one o'clock class. Uh, so I'd like to propose that we start having two class times a week. That's, this material is so rich and so much uh, that you'll benefit from having the two class periods where we can actually talk about, you can hear me talk about, I can give you some, uh, I, I always give, will give you some interesting stuff to hang your, your mental pictures on as you're studying about these periods of history and while we're there. Uh, so uh, I need you to, to let me know if you cannot make a Wednesday one o'clock class meeting. I'm okay with it. I don't have, a, I personally don't have a problem with it. Um, I just need to let you know that next Wednesday on the 10th, I have a doctor's appointment. So I will attend. I'll just be a little late. Okay. But I don't have an issue with it. Anybody have a problem with Wednesday at, at, at one so far? This year? Well, I'm, if, open, I'm open to it. Okay. Me too. If, if you need to be absent for a class, let me know in advance uh, so that I don't think, well, there's, there's a deadbeat. Um, and I will record all of these classes so that if you happen to miss one, you can still get some good out of it. I'm recording now. Um, and by the way, so you know, you you are on candid camera. Um, all right. And the second second thing is to talk about the textbooks. Uh, I finally got all of the uh, pin and pin the f f fortress introduction to black church history. They are now in, uh, see, okay, a couple of you've got them. They're now in Ms. Keisha's office. Uh, and um, you can find out when she's gonna be here. She's gonna be in the office today till three o'clock tomorrow from 11 to three. And she wasn't sure about the rest of the week. Uh, you can email her and uh, which is T Barger, B-A-R-G-E-R. Uh, at Simmons College and say, when will you be around that I can pick up the books? And she'll be happy to let you then. These are on loan from the college and then bring them back to us at the end of the semester. The other books um, are, uh, they're on reserve. Uh, there are books that there's only little pieces and there's no point in your trying to, that's not necessarily for you to try to buy them. I know a lot of people have problems buying a lot of books. So I've got them in the library. I changed because I know um, Ms. Smith and Mr. Fenton, who's in West Virginia, can't get to the library. I made some special arrangements for you all. Did you get the copies of the scans that I sent you, Ms. Smith? Um, no, I didn't. I couldn't actually, I could not find them. Okay. Like I, when you, I have the email, but I didn't get the actual scans itself. Oh, really? All right. I'll send it again. Thank you. All right. Please send the email out again with the books. Say what? I said, please send that email out again with the uh, reading material on each one you want it. it uh, okay. It's on the, the course schedule. Uh, if you look at on Canvas, there is a section that says syllabus and it has both the syllabus and the class schedule. That's all of the assignments are there in that class schedule. They're also, and here's, here's the trick, they're also under modules in Canvas. So if you go to the Canvas page for this class, on the left side are the, all, the whole bunch of little side pieces and one of them, there's announcements and there's home and there's assignments and there's, there's your grade book. You can look in your grades. 
and but there's also what I call what's called modules. And I have every week's assignment, the topics we'll be talking about, what's your sign for the following week, and the, the, um, <clears throat> the written assignment that's due that week. Uh, all it's right there under modules. So you don't have to go searching around all through Canvas just to find out what's on for this week. That including the books that are assigned and when they're assigned. That help? Sure. Yeah, um, that's that's the advantage. Once you get on to the, you know, you catch on the canvas, you can begin to see here's all right there for you. It's not hard to find if you can get on canvas. If you can't get on canvas, then you'll need the extra extra help from um, from the folks in the uh, student affairs office. Uh, uh, Shante Vaughn is the tech support person who's very good at that stuff. And I think they brought on another person who's going to help with Canvas, but I've forgotten who that is. See if you can find that out. Um, so, I, and I, I, I took off some of the books that were originally on the library reserves just because it's too hard to get them all out and they were, it was too much. So I, I reduced the number of books. Uh, what's on there now is for next week is the reading from uh, the book, The Christian Imagination. A uh, chapter titled Zurara's Tears. Uh, that's um, this is probably that's going to be one of the most difficult reads for you in the whole semester, uh, but it's what we need to talk about for next week. Um, and also for next week, there's a, a paper that I that's on the modules for next week of the called the history of white supremacy. <clears throat> Again. You can just pull that up, then pull up the link, and it'll it'll come up for you as a as a word document, and you can read that. It's like four pages or something, um, something I've written. Uh, so, so because next week, starting next Monday, we're going to talk about the colonial period, uh, the the beginning of this historical era we're studying now, from the colonial times up to contemporary times in America. Um, and it, that's so. That's what we're that's what we're going to be talking about. You need to get a hold of that, if at all possible. Um, the are the the paper on the uh, historical sources of white supremacy will get some of the same stuff that the Jennings book will have, but those two are, are requirements. Okay, um, let's talk about. I didn't have on the list, but I realized I need to talk about the syllabus, all right? Uh, another angle on how do you know what this crazy old white man wants us to do in this class? It's all there on the syllabus. So if you if you look on the syllabus, that's uh, it's uh, it's on the at the very beginning of the of the course uh, page, uh, and it says history of Christianity two, H I S. Uh, 205. Uh, the first thing in there, besides the course description, is what are the objectives of the college and how are the objectives of this class helping to push you forward so you're learning the things you're supposed to be learning at Simmons College? Uh, eventually, there's a thing called course learning outcomes, and that is specifically what I'm expecting you to have be able to be able to demonstrate you've learned by the end of the semester. Uh, so you can, if you go back and say, what, what are we, what, what is he doing? Oh, there it is. And I'll be measuring that kind of stuff by your weekly, uh, weekly papers you're going to be turning in, your midterm exam, your term paper, and your final exam. It's all be tied together. I'm not going to be talking, asking you to think extraneously it all ties together as to, to learning what you need to be learning. Uh, the next thing on the syllabus is the uh, specific, um, it has the textbooks. Then there's the, the, um, the, the assignments. And here are the assignments. There is, there is a weekly, what I call a reading report. And each, each week the mod, in the module, it says the 
for the assignment for the reading report. And the, the basic assignment is always the same. It's just about the topics we've talked about in this, in this week. Uh, for next week, you, the first one will be due for you uh, at the, on Friday at the end of that week. And it'll be about the colonial period and the experience of Africans and how that experience of the colonial period affected the ongoing history of Africans and African Americans in current current society. That'll be the focus of that paper. Um, so there's every week there's going to be one of those papers. It's like a one-page paper. Doesn't have to be a lot. You submit it on Canvas, uh, and I create it on Canvas, and you can get it back. It, you can then see what I did and what I said with it and what you got on it. Each one of those is worth two points per week. Um, there will be a midterm exam uh, just um, just before the midterm break. And that will be on all of the stuff we've studied between now and that period of time. I will give you a chance. I will review that, that material with you before the exam. And the exam will be an, uh, an email. I will email the exam to you and you send it back to me. Uh, that's, that's what that's going to be. The third PUC assignment is a term paper. Uh, in, in which I'm going to, and you'll see the, ex, this, the full description of the assignment and the requirements for that term paper under, on the syllabus. It's also posted uh, on the, in the modules somewhere in there. I forgot that where I put that. But I'll tell you basically uh, what it is. I want you to write a five-page paper on one of the major uh, movements or denominations in Black church history in America. Uh, <clears throat> starting and writing af right after the midterm break, we're going to study five major uh, developments in church in Black church uh, history that are currently around. We're going to study Methodists, Black Methodists. We're going to study Black Baptists. We're going to study Black Pentecostals. And then we're going to study the prosperity movement. That's only four. Um, then we're going to look at the um, yeah. Then we're going to look at the uh, civil rights movement and Black Lives Matter and the current push for racial justice. And we're going to look at Black church theology. But I want you to write a paper on one of those four major movements of church history in America. So if you can, yeah, and so I want you to pick. I'm, I'm going to write about, oh, and and neatly enough, there's a chapter in the pin book about each one of these. So you'd be starting to read that, and we'll talk about it in class. And um, so you, the, the paper is about that. I want you to use at least three other resources besides the textbooks. So you've got to be digging a little bit to learn more than what you can actually learn in class. Uh, I'm going to require that it be uh, written in, in good college form with good, uh, um, good grammar. I need it to be uh, very carefully proofread before you turn it in for structure and language and, and grammar. I wanted to use your citations very carefully so you let us let me know where did you get this information. Uh, and they have to have them properly inserted into the text and also then the references at the end. Uh, so this is, this is, it's not a heavy big paper, but it's a big piece of college writing that we expect you to either know how to do or learn how to do in order to get this kind of paper done. Um, there is help for that, by the way. And uh, early in the, early in the class, Ms. Linda Ellison tuned in and Mr. Holbrook was commenting about her help to him in an earlier class. Uh, I'm going to have her here in class next Monday to talk about how she can help you prepare to write that that uh, that paper in good form so that your, uh, your writing and grammar are clear, so that your citations are all well done, well and good, and, and it's, in, it's in a good form. Um, also, by the way, she asked me to tell you that she's having a workshop 
this Wednesday at noon on the what she calls APA style or how do you take you say okay I, I used this particular book or this particular source on the internet to get this information for this paper and I'm putting it in here how do I put that so that it's properly done so I'm not plagiarizing so that the, anybody who reads the paper can see what it is and go find it if they want to dig into it further. Um, and that's a very important piece of college writing that you can get from her on this Wednesday. Um, so there's the, there's the weekly papers, there's the term paper, that's due April the 23rd. Um, toward the end of the semester, but that's early enough if you turn it in and I say, yeah, you could you could do better on this and I can ask you to re rewrite it and you can get a better grade. And I'll tell you how you can do that. Um, Dr. Salia, excuse yes, me, if we were interested in Ms. Ellison's workshop, how do we go by uh, getting it or allow uh, her, you know, acknowledging that you need it? Um, that as she as she understood it, the student affairs folks are going to put out a some public publicity about it. So watch the publicity on across however you get it for Simmons College. It should be going. If you don't um, if you don't get it, you can um, you can email her. Her email is l ellison uh, at Simmons College ky .k .edu. Yeah. Thank question. you. I didn't mean to interrupt you. No, Thank no, you. I, I'm always happy to have you ask a question. Um, so the weekly papers, term paper, midterm exam, which will be multiple choice and fill in the blank and true, false and matching. Um, and basically what I'll be looking for in that is key people, events, trends, cultural things, the, the, the details of history that, that in order to get out of a history class, you have to have remembered a few things like who was the ruler at this particular time in a particular uh, important movement in, country, in the country or uh, what, as the question I asked you on the pretest, uh, on the, the requirement for um, uh, uh, attendance, what, what is Jim Crow? Things like that, and that those will be that will be what that that is. The final will be a similar kind of thing at the end of the semester and the whole semester. Those are the requirements for the class. Let me see if you have questions or comments or worries about that. Any of those? I can't talk to you. Yes, you can. Oh, you hear me now? I sure can. Okay. okay. I wasn't. <laughs> I wasn't able to talk earlier. Uh oh, you're on. Be careful what you say. <laughs> <laughs> okay okay because i missed part of that i had to come back in and, and reset oh yeah okay well i've recorded it you can go you can go on okay. uh to the canvas and, and and download it later if you need okay. to um other questions on the the assignments uh the first one simon is it uh when is it due and who is it by it was on it was on my uh, canvas uh, uh, my uh, email earlier webmail earlier so I'll go back and pull that up is that the right one the, the next the, the next weekly assignment is uh, the reading report on the week of February 8th okay but don't we have one that was on my email not too long ago webmail uh, or something that's the, the reading assignment that's what you have to read okay that's and that's in the library okay yeah there there's there the the assignments are preparing for the class and doing the reading but you don't submit anything for that you just do it okay and we'll talk about it in class the written assignment will say do a submission and okay i got you it. yeah got it Thank you almost confused me there sir <laughs> cut, it, cut it out <laughs> Mess, messing with the old professor. No, I can't mess with you. I just got to make sure I'm on the right track. I, 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 that's just fine. You, <laughs> you and I have been in class before. We know how, how to do yes. this. 
Yes, sir. All right. Any other questions about the assignments? <clears throat> um, all right. So I gave you an overview of the whole semester in terms of where we're going, and the with the with the four historic denomination movements, and your term paper, and where we're going. Um, and the the weekly paper is to to let me know what you're getting out of it, so that it, you know, I don't we don't wait till the midterm and I discover you've been reading and so forth, but you you're getting you're not getting anything out of it. This is for me to be able to help you make sure you're on the right track as we go through the class. So it's it's a little thing that we do together. Um, <clears throat> All right. Um, I, I think I talked a little bit last week. But let me say again, how to study history. Uh, it's important to know where this is a history class. Uh, history is about a set of here are the things that happened over a period of time. And this is how what happens next relates to what happened before. So we begin to see the trail of how things go from A to B to C to D. Um, the people who write the books on history are called historians. Historians uh, work in facts. They work on events. They work on people. They work on trends, the things that they could find evidence of this is what happened. So if there was a battle in some on some battlefield somewhere between two kingdoms, uh, they can find information about who were the nations involved with the battles, how many people were there, how many people were killed, who were the generals, what it was about, why were they fighting? Those are facts that historians do. We have facts about who are the presidents of the United States. We, we know who those people were and we know some things about them. Um, we don't know everything about them because historians pick out the facts that they think are important for you to remember. There's, there's for example, George Washington, the first president of, rem of, of fond memory there is also a myth about George Washington that he chopped down a cherry tree was it when he was a little boy. Remember that story? Mm -hmm. and, he, and his daddy said, who did it? And he said, I cannot tell a lie. Is that a true fact? Probably not. But it gets shared and told for a reason. Because the historians that would share that or people who would teach you that want you to know there's something, something that they want you to remember about George Washington was he was a man of his word. That's the agenda, the background agenda of the historian. We want you to remember this about George Washington. Um, I know I told you last last week that this is an important piece. Historical writer, historians write historic history books about American history, and they very uh, up until only very recently has any of them actually described the experience, the real facts about slavery in America. They have downplayed the brutality, the inhumanity, the way that people have, have continually treated other people with as though they are animals and what the impact of that was on American history. They don't say how America's economy was built on the scarred backs of the, ba of the black enslaved people. All of that is left out of the, of the history books. Uh, why? There's an agenda there. They want us to think about America as this white, shining, gleaming uh, uh, nation on a hill that everybody can look up to. And the, the, the discerning way of studying history is 
you as the student read the histories you find and you say to yourself, now that's very interesting. I think I understand what this person is saying and let me stop and get real skeptical. What is this person's agenda? What is he wanting me to come away with and what may he or she be leaving out or focusing on that's not really the whole truth or pushing a particular truth that may or may not be as fully helpful to us as we lead, in, lead into America's future. Uh, may not be helpful to me as a human being in this particular situation or as a student at an HBCU. So I'm encouraging you to study history with a critical mind. I want you to, to take everything that I say everything that you read as a piece of historical writing, historiography, we'll call it, that has to be critically understood. Don't just say, well, it, it's in the book, it must be true, because that's not the way it is in the world. Um, and so I'll be asking you on your papers, and I'll be asking you on the, uh, uh, eventually uh, all along, what did you like about what you read? And what do you find to be critical about you read, what you read? What might you raise questions about? What might you get curious about? And that's partly where you could go, what Ms. Johnson was saying, I'll go down to this, follow the other book and see what else it says. And this says, and that's it. Who is the author? What is their agenda? Why are they particularly writing it the way they're writing it? Those are important questions for studying history in, in America today, but certainly in an HBCU. Uh, questions, comments about that? Or we could have a good argument about it for that matter. Anybody want to argue with me? Uh, no. Nah. <laughs> oh, okay. By the end of the semester, you'll be ready to argue with me. That's okay. Um, but, but one of the things that, um, one of my, and, and the underlying piece of that is that, that we all have to recognize we are all limited in what we see and understand and what we want to have, what we want to say happen. And so I, uh, the, the, the educated person has to adopt a, an attitude of humility, humility. I only know what I know which is based on my experience, what I've been taught, what I've seen and heard and experienced, and that's limited. You know what you know based on what you experienced and have been taught and have seen and, and, and thought. Uh, those are very different. If we have a difference of opinion about that, <clears throat> um, I may want to tell you you're wrong, or I may want to tell you, you know, I don't know about that. That's not the way I see it. And that's a very different thing because I don't know anything absolutely certainty, certainly. I said in one class one time, I, the, the one thing I uh, am most suspic suspicious about is anybody to say, tells, tells me they are absolutely certain about a third certain thing they say, they think or believe. And a student said, are you certain about that? <laughs> and I have to say, well, no, to be honest, I can't be certain about my difficulty with certainty even. That's my humility. So I'm encouraging you to think critically with humility, with respect, about the things we're learning. Um, and and the, there will be things in here you'll find that go against everything you've been taught, I guess. Um, a second piece of studying history, and I say this in the, in the description of the class, this is uh, my attempt to have it a non-Eurocentric and uh, to every, whatever extent we can, an, an Afrocentric approach to history. 
um, I sort of alluded this last week, uh, the history class I took in the church history class I took in seminary way back in the 1960s um, taught me that the history of Christianity looked like this. It started in Palestine in the Middle East in what is now Israel and it spread into Europe and became a major European religion. Uh, it spread then from Europe into the rest of the world, into Africa and Asia, and into the Western Hemisphere, took root there, and has then spread from there. That's the history that I was taught, and I never questioned it. Um, <clears throat> the, I, I, the, the, but that's not the way it happened. Many, most of the earliest Christian churches that thrived and grew and became quite you know, influential were in Asia and Africa. By the year 800, there was a bishop in what is now Baghdad in Iraq that had uh, 80, he's an archbishop basically, had 80 bishops under him all the way through Asia in India and in China and Tibet and um, uh, the, the stands. And then he actually had one in Japan by 800 of the common era. We never learned that. I never knew there were Asian Christians that early. Um, seven or eight of the major, another thing, seven or eight of the major saints of the early Christian church were Africans. Have you heard of St. Augustine or St. Augustine? Where was he from? You know? Can't hear you. No, I don't know where he's from, but I know they have a parish for him right here off of Broadway. Yeah. Yeah, I, I was saying I should remember this because it was one of the things uh, Professor Brogdon had taught in his class. Uh-huh. Oh, it and once, once being Catholic and attending it. <laughs> yeah. I was a kid, though. I was a kid. Well, yeah, he's one of the saints of the Catholic Church, which is early Christianity. And he's one of the things, he's one of the most influential theologians in, a, in Christian theology. His theology is still being considered as a piece of understanding how we understand God and our role as Christians in the world. Because Ethiopian. No, no, but you're 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 on the right continent. He was yeah. from, he was from North Africa, from probably what it is in the town of Hippo. Uh, and that would that would have been Tunisia. Okay, now, now I remember. Now if you look up. A little, it's a fun thing. Look up on your on your Google search, uh, Saint Augustine or Augustine. It is, it is the, the historical way of saying his name. About four out of eight of the pictures and, and icons of Augustine show him as a white man. <laughs> No, if you live in North Africa, you were a very, very brown person, maybe black. Mm -hmm. um, and then there's a whole list of others, Athanasius and, and um, well, my 77 year old brain doesn't pull the names up, but the whole bunch of those folks who were the most influential theologians of the first three centuries of Christianity were Africans. Do we remember that? No, because all of the Europeans had the agenda that this is a white people's Christianity. We forgot that. I never thought. Here's my confession. I never stopped to think about whether Augustine and Athanasius and Arius and all the, the, some of those guys, and we'll, we'll study about those when we get to History, history, history of Christianity one, uh, which we'll probably teach next fall. 
I never stopped to think they were Africans, but they were. Um, in fact, I'm, I continue to get disturbed by the fact that most pictures of Jesus in many, many churches in America show Jesus as a white person. What skin tone is Jesus who grew up in Nazareth, what's now Palestine, in the Middle East? What skin tone would have he had? It wouldn't be white. Darn right. Would, <laughs> exactly. Somewhat bronzed. Yeah. Um, yeah. From yeah. what from what I got from my class and Dr. Brogdon, uh, <laughs> these paintings and pictures of saints and Jesus were painting painted that way because of the Roman Empire and the English wanted to make it more appealing to uh, the Europeans. Let me see, because uh, yeah. they believed in the purity of the white race at that time, because even the Romans, uh, the upper crest, they chose their wives by the color of their hair and their skin tone. It, the hair had to be, the hair had to be blonde, and their eyes were at least blue or gray. Any woman that had brown eyes, they looked downward on. So it's a purity. It became a purity issue. We think it, the whiter, the more pure. So therefore, Jesus, the most pure creation ever made, bound to have been white. It, 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 there's a process called erasure. And there was a period of time when that, that process then worked into the Christian religion. And they took a lot of the paintings and icons and, and car, cave paintings they had and so forth that showed uh, two things, women in leadership and the brown people in leadership. And they re redid them. They put beards on the women, and they made the white face faces of the saints and of Jesus brown, and they turned them from brown to white. Uh, we have a word for that now. It's called whitewashing. Right. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, I think I think it comes from where the Europeans were using lead to make their skin look pale. Am I correct on that? Uh, some did. There, there was some of that, but it was, it was partly, as my, the, my paper on white supremacy will tell you, there was just, just this kind of sense of the Northern European ideal of the blonde, blue-eyed, or red-haired, blue-eyed, green-eyed people are the ideal people of God. Right. They are actually the chosen people. Those Jewish people that were brown, they're not the chosen people. They rejected Jesus. We're the chosen people. And that get carried through all the Western, all the Western theology and history. Um, and so it's important for you as black people, and for me as a white person teaching at a black college, to say, you've got to know a big ch chunk of the history we're studying is based on African and in Asian theology and people. And you got to remember that. And you can take some peace, you can take some courage in that. How's that hitting you, Jamal? Have you heard any of this stuff before? I have, yes, sir. I've, I've um, definitely heard of, as the, as the term you said, you know, whitewashing and you know how the paintings and uh, you know they they removed or I took away the original paintings of Christ or of the you know of the disciples. Um, so yeah, I've heard a bit of a bit of this before. Yeah. Good. Yeah. And that's Dr. That's, Sawyer. Wouldn't it also assist in the superiority measures of conquering these countries? If I come in with the power and tell you 
you're wrong. You're going to go to hell because you don't look like me, but I'm going to help you. Yeah. Then I'm going to show that I'm the right and wrong. Uh, and I know in slavery and in other ways, once you get that the mindset of spirituality is the first level of conquering. Mm -hmm. That's exactly the, the, the way that the description of that article, uh, Zerara's Tears, is going to tell you about how it happened in, in the, when the Europeans started colonizing the Africans. It was absolutely clear. We're the white folks. We have the right to do this. And it will be good for you folks because you can, you may be sla slaves, but at least you'll be Christians and you'll get to go to heaven. Mm -hmm. Dr. Sawyer, when we go to the library to read this, are we able to make copies or we have to stay there to read it? Uh, uh, in terms of copyright, you should not be making copies of this stuff, which is why I'm not why I'm not just copying it for you. Okay. Yeah. And if the librarian sees you doing it, he's likely to have his head explode. And no, I know. That's why I'm asking. <laughs> that's why I'm you asking. Mr. Chalk's head to explode. <laughs> no, that's, that's why I'm... No, because I like... I have to... Like I told you, I have to read, reread, and, you know, for myself, you know. I know. That's... And there's a limitation to this, I understand. Um, so you, you'll get a big picture of the, this from reading the Zerara's Tears, but you'll get some of the same basic stuff in, in a, a shorter outline form in my paper on the history of, of white supremacy, historical sources. So that they'll, they'll go together. They'll, they'll fit in your mind. Yes, sir. <laughs> And Dr. Sir, you said the Soros Tears, you said it's in the library, is that correct? Yeah, it's on reserve. Okay. Uh, should be on the on the, the checkout desk uh, to the right of where the librarian sits. And there's also a list of this, the schedule of watch, watch uh, assigned for which week and so forth right there with those books. Okay. All right. It's a, uh, there's a, I have a, a sneaky agenda with this, by the way, mm. and that is, I want people to start using the library. Right, right. right. Uh, hardly anybody uses the library at Simmons College. It's a, a, it's fairly limited. B, it's not on the campus. It's four blocks away from the block, or three blocks away from the campus. <laughs> it's not the most convenient library in the world, but it is the resource we have, and. Um, Part of being a college educated person is knowing how to use and to use the library. I have experience at it. But that's my, you know, my meta agenda. <clears throat> Good question. All right. And you um, see all the, oh, I'm sorry. Oh, yeah. you see all the books that you wanted us to gleam through a glance at uh or on the silk. Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. They're they're on the syllabus and they're also on the um in in the week's assignments for each week of the for the schedule, class schedule. There's okay. two ways to get at them. I'm sorry. Uh one more question. Yes ma'am. So I'm I'm understanding that we're reading about um Zara's tears but our writing assignment, could you reiterate on that, what we're writing on one yeah. more time? Um, yeah. I'd have to pull, let me see. Yeah, I can pull it up so I can give you that. Um, I apologize, I apologize. No, that's all right. Um, oh, we need it, we need it. <laughs> she sounds like me. I, I will tell you more about it next week. Since that's what it's due, but, I, but since you asked, um, that's a good question, and I'm glad you are interested enough to want to know. So it is a uh, one-page um, uh, yeah, actually actually there's one due this week. I didn't, I didn't remember that. Mm, see, look, he was trying to get us. 
<laughs> Let me see. No, I'm looking the wrong one. Nope, not due this week. Um, so the um, okay. So for next next Friday, a week from this week. This, the first assignment, reading assignment number one is due. It is, there's four things. One, a one page summary of what you learned about this week's topic, that week's topic. That week's topic is the colonial period uh, of European Christian co colonization, All right? Mm -hmm. And the, the global effects on it. <clears throat> um, you have been uh, in that you need to list three historical facts that you think are worth remembering from what you have heard in the class discussions and what you have read. <clears throat> so it's a summary of all that stuff. Names, dates, events. Um, the third piece is describe the one thing and this is in this will be in your in your assignments and in the in the schedule. <clears throat> one thing you found in the reading and that that it changed you or challenged, I'm sorry, yeah, that changed you and are one thing that reinforced your opinions and your beliefs. I want to know how did how did how did you react to this? And then uh -huh. <clears throat> the fourth the fourth one is ask a question. What don't you understand or what would you like to more do more about or uh, ask something about the agenda or what's the what's the trick here? <clears throat> So, so a little critical thinking, along with you know, what you what you see there. Okay. A summary of the okay. week's topic. You, you just says reading report, and I'm okay. I'm following along with you, so I, I got it. Okay. Yeah. I got you. And, and the assignments you. are numbered, and it tells you when they're due, <clears throat> and you can submit them on the <clears throat> on the assignment page there in in Canvas. Yes, sir. And I handily can grade them on Canvas and get them back to you, boom, just like that. So you can okay. regularly consult your Canvas page, which is kind of fun. Yes, sir. Okay. So that's the, and and then, so, um, yeah, we'll, we'll talk about this stuff some more on Wednesday. We, the fun just has just started. All right, well, let's get it going then. Okay, any other questions? So we are meeting here Wednesday. That's the next question. Yes, please. All I'll right. send you an invitation. Hello, right. and, and, and the, I don't change the, um, the access, accession numbers for the Zoom calls. I send you a new invitation every week. It's the same number, the same uh, access code to get in. Yes, sir. In case right. you lose it, but so well, how do I do that? And you can always email me or text me if you have a question. Yes, sir. Okay. Last last questions. We're getting done early. I don't know. You may may want to ask you for your money back. <laughs> um, I don't have a question, but I have a statement. Please do. Okay, so I was looking and I actually found the supplemental readings that you sent me, so you don't have to resend them. Good, thank you. Okay. Good. Thanks for checking in and let me know. No problem. Dr. Zoya, I'm not going to ask you no more questions for the whole curriculum. I promise. I I'll just do that. like this. And like, yeah. yeah, like, yes, but I'm full of them today. But no. Don't when promise something you can't offer. I, I know, right? I know. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, when I did have problems with the canvas, uh, when I submitted it and it did reject it, and I did have to send it to you, right? Will you critique it from that email, or should I go back to Can uh, Kansas? Lord have mercy. Kansas. We're not in Kansas anymore, right? I know. I got that in Super Bowl <laughs> on my head. That's terrible. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, I I screwed up that Canvas assignment uh, because I, I I had screwed up the one in the other class, and I went to correct it. And then what I, what I ended up doing was <coughs> reading, 
the assignment in this class. So it went away. Right, I've seen that. that was, okay. That was my problem, not your problem. Um, so I, and I don't have any more what you, if, if you send me something directly, then I'll, I'll comment about it, but. Um, yes, it's on your personal email. Okay, I, I didn't, I haven't looked for that. Um, and basically there's no right answers to what, what you okay. offered. That was just a chance, my, give a sense of giving me a sense of what you already know about history and what you're okay. thinking about things. I, I enjoyed seeing who you mentioned as the people you, the name you really want to hold out as black, in the black church history. Those are fun. <coughs> <coughs> if you have not turned in those, those papers, that assignment, I still do need you to do it. Let's see. I wrote down who didn't. Who I need, still need to hear from. Um, and I don't think I'm I the got, geeky freshman. I promise. I got stuff to learn from Walter, Lucretia. Look, I'm the geeky professor. If they say five o'clock p.m., I'm running around here at four thirty like Henny Penny. So I'll I'll be to the point next semester. I'll be like, yeah. Yeah, that's right, right, right now I'm like, run and go hit a tree. Okay, like I <laughs> don't, don't feel bad. I, I'm still, you know, like I said, I'm I'm still learning too, Miss Kim. Don't do that. Because <laughs> yeah. I feel so embarrassed asking the question. I'd be like, oh, don't man, feel embarrassed. Uh, I'm challenged. Someone told me that asking the question was free, so I'm yeah. asking all questions. <laughs> Yeah, I have the moments, Miss Kim, where I feel like the deer in the headlights is the car coming uh, around the curve. Okay, I just don't want to be the student. They be like, oh, Jesus, That's like when we praying. I'll be like, it's me again, Lord. Like, he got me on auto damn my mind. Oh, my God. There, there's no such thing as a dumb, a long question or a dumb question. Mm. If you don't know, my job is to help you figure it out. That's my yeah. job, not your problem. Because I might be, uh, uh, Dr. I might be so, you know what you're going to ask. Dr. So, you know where they have our grades listed? Yes, ma'am. And, you know, it'll give you that no sh that notification like you're missing something. Right. It has me missing grades for last semester, and I didn't even have this class last semester. <laughs> I, I think that's quite interesting. It's a good thing. <laughs> <trip. laughs> I went through the really last good. semester with Reverend Baskin and put on, tapped on grades and everything said missing. Oh my God. Uh, no, I mean, but we knew that, we knew Reverend Baskins didn't even use Canvas. So I understand yeah. that. But this, I didn't even have this class last semester. So it has me missing a quiz for 20 points and I didn't even have this class. So I'm just <laughs> aware. I don't know if you can change it or if it'll count against me. So I'm just letting you know. Hey, I know it will not account against you. I, I won't do that. Uh, B. Because I was like, November 1st, 2020. Oh my I God. said September 11th. I said, wait a minute. Wait a minute. It's a good trick if you can pull it off, but it's a, uh, I, don't <laughs> understand, I don't understand the grade book at all. Okay. Uh, it, it well, then me and you are both in the boat. Lord, yeah. thank you. Yeah. Amen. Oh, okay. Okay. <laughs> don't sweat it. If, I'm, I'm I'm trying to use it. I, I, it didn't work for me last semester. I got careful tutoring on it this semester, and I'm trying again. But I don't know why these old those old tests are on there. I'll go back and look and see if I can get rid of them. Okay. Um, um and if that doesn't work, I'll go back to I haven't I have a spreadsheet and I'm not afraid to use it. Okay. I'll, I'll deal with your grades that way. We'll be fine. Okay. okay. Thank you. Uh, Ms. Smith, I did not get a, a submission from you about that. I'm not hearing you. She's talking to me. She's talking to us. Ms. Smith, I, I didn't I didn't get a paper from you. Oh yeah, I have it written down. I just haven't typed it and sent it in yet. I'm sorry. I need it to I need it today or the 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 feds are gonna come after us from for your, your, your money. 
They're claiming. Oh, Lord, not the feds. Okay. No, I'm not, the... <laughs> not the men in black, baby. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I actually just got off the phone with the feds last night. So I'm going to go ahead and just stop them in their tracks. <laughs> That's right. Yeah, yeah, you, yeah you, they've got a file on you already, then. Look out. No, Lord. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Very good. Thank you all very much. I'll see you Wednesday afternoon. All right, everybody. Stay safe. All right, everyone. See you Wednesday. Hi, everyone. Keep asking questions. Thank you. I'm real. thankful everybody. Uh, we'll, we'll email. <laughs> <laughs> Bye, y'all. See y'all Wednesday. Bye, guys.